The next reason why we as Muslims believe and that the Arabic language is important is because of its connection to the land in which Arabic is spoken, i.e. the global placement of the Arabic language. Now, you go to any top universities, Arabic departments, website page, and you go through it, you would definitely come across the, the possibilities of employment in the, the reasons, they mention the reasons why you should study Arabic. Because it's such a, it opens up such a lucrative, such a you know profitable uh, career path for you. Because Arabic world is is the center of all uh, happening. Everything is happening there. You know there is news, there is uh, business opportunities, and so on. So it's the heart of all happenings. It is literally the heart. So you would find us across the pages of these top universities, Oxford, Cambridge, whatever have you, right? When we say global placement of the Arabic language and the Arabic region, or the Arab region, we don't intend uh, the, 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 the same connotation. We don't intend that Arabic is important for us as Muslims because of its global placement, because, you know, we have career opportunities there, uh, because of its business opportunities, because of its resources, and so on and so forth. No doubt, Allah Azza wa Jal has made this region, the Middle East, starting from the Arabian Peninsula, and... Uh, and, and all the, the regions that are, that do belong to the Muslims, Allah Azza wa Jal has indeed made them the most resourceful uh, regions. They have the, the highest form of resources, be it uh, fuel, crude oil and so on and so forth, may, be it vegetation, be it our heritage, the, the ancient sites and so on and so forth. A lot of resources and an abundance of wealth that Allah Azza wa Jal has granted to this region. So this, this region will always remain relevant in the history. It has remained relevant in the history, it is relevant in our present times, and it will always remain relevant um, in the future as well. So because of this global placement that the Arab region has, and Arabic is the medium of communication in that region, it behooves us as Muslims to engage with the Arabic language so we may engage with our brethren, our brothers and sisters, our families who live in uh, these regions. So we may engage with them, we may learn about them, we may have a heart-to-heart -heart attachment to them, a relationship with them, right? If we don't have that, and if we are divorced from this key uh, strategic location, then we will be divided as an ummah. So we need to learn the Arabic language because of its global placement in the language. It is a very, the Arabian Peninsula and the entire North Africa and the entire Arab speaking world, the Middle East, the entirety of it, and uh, the north of, you know, uh, of the Arabian uh, Peninsula, such as Iraq and, you know, uh, portions of Sham and so on and so forth, all the regions where Arabic is spoken, right? All of this is going to remain the center of all issues, right? In the Western media, you know, you have lucrative job opportunities for the journalists who want to go and work in the Middle East. Why is it? It's because they create fitna, they create corruption, and then they want to cover it. So it's it's an industry that's that sort of recycles itself, right? And if we don't engage with our our parts, uh, the, the parts of our body, our beings, the Muslim brothers and sisters who live in those lands, the part of our ummah, our brotherhood, then we are leaving them, right? And if we don't engage with them, then we have essentially left them stranded, or all, all to their own. So we as Muslims, no matter where we are, we need to value the the global, the, the, the strategic geographic location Allah Azza wa Jal has given to the Arab world, the Middle East. It is literally the center, the heart of the world. It is the heart of the world. And uh, the other reason why we should be engaging with the uh, Arabic language so that we may engage with its people is because we want to make sure that we can work as an ummah to purify our source. We can purify our heart. And the heart of the ummah is the Middle East. It's the Arabian Peninsula. It's where the Muslims speak Arabic. That is the heart of the ummah. That has always been the heart of the ummah. That is where... All the global powers, America, China, whatever the, the case may be, whatever it is in the future, whatever whatever it has been in the past, they have tried to establish 
some key positions in this region because this is a region if you don't control it you don't you cannot control the world and if muslims they get these regions back they can rule the world so it is it's so important that we attach ourselves with this language so that we may attach and engage with our heritage and our brothers and sisters who are alive who are living and this is the ummah that uh, we are a part of and uh, we, we we should appreciate the global placement uh, of the Arabic language Tayyib, when we mention purifying the source this is not something that we are mentioning the Prophet وسلم, towards the end of his life he gathered his, uh, his Sahaba and um, he gave them a very important wasiyah and this has been narrated by, uh, by Ibn Abbas, by Umar عن, by Abu Ubaidah, Ibn Jarrah and many other, uh, you know, other uh, Sahabas. And the meaning is simple. Cleanse the Arabian Peninsula from all non-Islamic influences, from all non-Islamic existence. So there's no coexistence in the Arabian Peninsula. There is no, um, you know, um, multiculturalism in the Arabian Peninsula. And the Arabian Peninsula, of course, is the Jazeera. It's the... It's the it's what is between it is what is uh, it looks like a heart when you look at look look at it on a map. It is you know enclosed between the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean, and from Yemen until the borders of uh, Syria and Iraq in the north. That is the Arabian Peninsula. So this is what the Prophet was talking about, and this is what he commanded. He said, "Qal, al mushrikina min al Arab." Expel the mushrikin and within mushrikin every single person that we. Considered to be a kafir, not a non-Muslim. That includes the Jehud and the Nasara, the, the Jews and the Christians. He said, expel them from the the, the, the source of our, our ummah, the heart of our ummah, which is the Arabian Peninsula. This is where Islam started. If you corrupt the source, everything else gets corrupted, right? So we purify the source, and this is one of the ways that we may engage, um, you know, with the ummah in in our times by reminding them of this, the virtue of the source that they are, that they are, and they have forgotten it. Subhanallah. Opposed to what this hadith says and what we should have been doing and purifying ourselves instead of giving army bases to non-Muslims so they may so they may bombard our brothers and sisters in different parts of the you know in the Middle East and corrupt them and so on and so forth, we expel them so they don't have any strategic locations, so they they may never overpower the Muslims, right? So that we may always retain our purity as Muslims. The Jazirat al Arab is the source, is the heart of the Muslims, and if we corrupt that. Islam and its people will be corrupted and that is what, exactly what we saw singers and mushrikeen and uh, you know satanist uh, artists uh, they have been invited to the, the the country they are being invited and they are being given residences you know you are, you, you are normalizing your relation with the, the kuffar especially with the israelis and so on and so forth by doing that you are giving them spaces in your own land that you are saying come to our lands you know let's live together let's Let's coexist and so on and so forth in the Jazeera. The Prophet ﷺ has excluded Jazirat al Arab uh, for only being for the Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ said, the, the hadith that was narrated by Umar radiallahu an, he said, لَأُخْرِجِنَّ الْيَهُودَ وَالنَّصَارَ مِنْ جَزِيرَةِ الْعَرَبِ حَتَّى لَا أَدَعَى إِلَّا مُسْلِمًا It's powerful. I will indeed expel all the Jews and the Christians from the Pen Arabian Peninsula until I don't leave anyone in it except the Muslims. So only Muslims live in the Arabian Peninsula because this is the heart. This is our source. So we we value this. And subhanAllah, a part of our aqidah, a forgotten sunnah in fact, is the sunnah of ighadatul kuffar. This is something that Allah Azza wa has mentioned in the Quran. It has been mentioned many, many places in the sunnah, right? Um, many many examples. For example, um, when and even in Mecca, even when the Muslims were weak, when Bilal radiallahu an was placed heavy stones on you know on his chest, you know you, you know he was tortured, and he was uh, you know made to lie on scorching uh, hot uh, desert sand in the midst of uh, the 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 um, you know the high sun. 
and they would ask him to denounce his religion, to curse the Prophet, to curse the religion of Allah and so on and so forth. And all he would say is Ahadun Ahad, one and one. Allah is one and Allah is one. Ahadun Ahad. And, and he would say it, yes, of course, to not only profess his faith, but also to anger and infuriate and rile up the kuffar. Right? And he said to them, if I knew any other word other than this, right, to to infuriate you, to rile you up, to 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 put to instill anger in you against, uh, to to make you uh, you know feel pathetic about yourselves, because I as a slave am so patient on this uh, this religion of Allah Azawajal, right? I would have said it. I would have said it in your faces to to really ridicule you and humiliate you. But I only know this these two words. This one word, Ahadun Ahad, so I say it, right? So he did it. Um, the Muslims, when they made Hijrah to Medina, that act of making Hijrah was an act of infuriating the Kuffar, humiliating them, right? Um, because how is it that such a huge a number of people leaves their city, their control? They wanted to punish them, they wanted to torture them, and everyone leaves. Right, this act of migration to Medina was an, it was a huge act of infuriating them and humiliating the the kuffar in the battlefield. We know in our tradition that we are not supposed to be arrogant. We're not supposed to walk arrogantly. We're not supposed to dress arrogantly, except in the battlefield. Allah Azza wa Jal hates pride and arrogance, except in the heart in the heat of the battle, where the Muslims they act arrogantly. They hold their heads high. They walk. And, you know, with pride and arrogance, because that pride and arrogance is for the sake of Allah's deen. So they humiliate. So the enemies of Allah they feel this, this, uh, this, the fear from the Muslims, right? All for the sake of Allah So if we do this instead of inviting people in and corrupting our source, you know, one of one of the statistics about the, the land of Dubai, for example, is that they are f they fear that its own inhabitants, the original Arabs who live there, the Emiratis, they will they are they are on, on they are on their due course to lose the Arabic language. They have already weakened the, the the strength that they have as Arabs. They have lost a lot of you know connection you know they have lost the connection with the arabic language and this is happening right now as we speak so the more expats you have the more doors you open for the kuffar to enter the jazeera of the arabs the peninsula uh, of the arabs you are giving way to um the corruption of the source and we don't want to ha want that to happen so if the arabs are going to not fulfill their responsibilities it is our job to do it right we because it is because we believe that w Allah Azza wa has blessed this land of Arabia. It is our source. It is our heart, and we must cleanse it. If it's not going to be cleansed, and it's not the responsibility is not going to be met by the, the Arabs of the current time, then we must propel that case. We must remind the Ummah that this is, should this should be happening. This is only for the Muslims. Is, these lands are only for the Muslims. Allahu Akbar. And Umar ibn Khattab, uh, acting upon the. The, the last uh, wasiya of the Prophet ﷺ, his last advice to the Muslims, he actually expelled the, the Christians and the Jews from the Arabian Peninsula to the lands of uh, Palestine and Sham and so on and so forth. So, concluding this, Arabic language is important to us because of its global placement, because it allows us engagement with our community in those lands, and it gives us a, a pathway, an opportunity to cleanse the source of our deen. The cleanse the Arabian Peninsula of any non-Islamic influences because that would protect our language, our culture, our heritage and would become a source of regaining our vitality, regaining our strength as an ummah.